Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet. And even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. It is run by Kate. Come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. in the front page of a seed catalog. <laughs> Wonder where Andy Parker is. I'm gonna miss my connection, sure. Oh, he'll get here. He always does. And how long do you figure on staying in the city, Kate? Overnight, I expect. Yeah, just about that, sure. I did that once at a grocer's convention, 1956. I'll never forget that hotel. Hmm. Fancy? Why, they even had a fella in an admiral's uniform to open the door. Oh, well, that's pretty impressive, all right. Hey, what are you going for, Kate? Well, if you don't mind, Sam, I'd rather not say. Oh, I don't mind. Not a bit. I respect your privacy. If there's one thing a person's entitled to, it's his privacy. And I respect it. You got relatives there? <laughs> no, Sam. You know I haven't. Well, I just thought some might have moved in. You know, not that I'm prying, my dear. I wouldn't pry for the world. <laughs> Especially if somebody's going on private business. If that's what you're going on. That's what I'm going on. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't want to pry, you know, if you don't feel like saying anything, just don't say it. Good. I mean, if you got a secret, <laughs> you tell somebody, then it's not a secret anymore. That's right. Even if that somebody is a person that wild horses wouldn't <laughs> drag it out of. <laughs> Sam, you really want to know, don't you? Well, Kate? Kate Bradley, why are you all dressed up? What's going on? <gasps> Where are you going and what for? Now that's what I call a prior. <laughs> oh, there's Andy. Oh, oh. Kate, you're going to the city. Why? How come I haven't heard about this? Selma, does it bother you not to know my plans? <laughs> Bye, Selma. <laughs> Going. What's happening? She'd tell you I know she would. <laughs> Sam, I'm about to make a large payment on my bill. Well, I'll tell you, Selma, she's going to accept the Nobel Peace Prize for keeping her nose out of other people's business. <laughs> Mom, going off to the city without telling anybody anything. You kids still fretting over why your mom went to town yesterday? Aren't you? Why worry about a thing when shrewd deduction gives you the answer? Uncle Joe, you know. You figured it out? Oh, yes, my dear. Elementary. <laughs> Take this magazine, for instance. Observe what it contains. It's just an ordinary magazine. Ah, yes. But check this ad on page 86. How to find your perfect mate. That's a new science fiction way of finding out who goes with who. You fill out this form, tell them all about yourself, your likes, your dislikes, everything. Then they send it through this big machine, and out comes your perfect mate. I sent in one once. And they sent back your perfect mate? Well, I guess at that time they hadn't quite worked all the bugs out of the system. Why? What happened? Well, they said my perfect mate was a cocker spaniel named Ralph. <laughs> Smart, why don't you bark before we hear the whistle? That's a special whistle. It must mean Mom's home. Why, oh, you just made a lucky guess. <laughs> Boy, could you please? Did she tell? Uh, did you, Kate? Charlie, I told you, not until the family's here. 
Couldn't give us a hint, huh? Mm -mm. She's a tough one, Charlie. I've been primed with all the skill at my command. That don't mean much. You ain't exactly Mr. District Attorney. <laughs> now that everybody's here, how about it, Kate? Well, uh, I hope you'll excuse me. I don't want to make a big thing out of this, but this is probably the biggest deal I ever got involved in. Kate, you haven't gone and done something without my shrewd counsel. Oh, well, I'm, I'm afraid so, Uncle Joe. All right, let's have it. How much did they stick you for? Well, according to the figures I have here, it's the other way around. Well, what do you mean, Mom? What figures? Yeah, Kate, what's the deal? Well, I've arranged to sell the hotel. Sell the shame? Well, well, it isn't so. You're kidding. I had a feeling I should have gone along with you. Now, now, now. Let's all go up to the hotel. And we'll have some refreshments. And I think I can show you that we really have cause to celebrate. Okay. Gee, I didn't even know she was thinking of it. If it's not too much trouble. Oh, no trouble at all. Anything for a tycoonist. <laughs> this means is that I'll be able to help each of you girls do whatever you want. Finish college, travel, have a career. I'll even be able to help a little when you get married, too. Then when all the birds have flown the nest, Uncle Joe and I will be able to sit back and take it easy. Hey, now you're getting to the good part. <laughs> Only kidding. Tell the truth, Kate. I got to admit you swung a pretty shrewd deal. Guess some of the old Carson cunning rubbed off over the years. <laughs> Yeah, I guess that's what it is. Mom, you're fabulous. Absolutely terrific. Let's hear it for Mom. Clickety-clack, clickety-clack. What's the best train on the track? Cannonball! Cannonball? <laughs> that's the only cheer we know. <laughs> it's the spirit that counts. <laughs> oh, of course it is. And in that case, thank you and doot-doot. Oh, my gosh. Speaking of toots, that reminds me. We were supposed to be in Pixley at 2.30. It's almost that now. Don't worry, we'll make it up. How? We won't go. <laughs> what show is this? Breakfast in bed for the big Wheeler dealer. Oh, nonsense. I haven't had breakfast in bed since... since I had you. Well, you're going to have to get used to living a life of leisure, so you might as well start now. And are you happy about all this? Oh, Mom, I'm just as proud of you as I can be, making a big deal like that. Well, that doesn't answer my question. Are you happy about it? Well, there is one thing. Yeah? If we leave, what about my career with the Hooterville Hawks? <laughs> you're graduating. You won't be playing anyway. Yeah, but I'm up for coach. Oh, Casey Bradley. It might be my life's career. One fine day, that little fellow with the bow and arrow is going to come along and choose you for a target and shoot you right out of the coach's box. <laughs> really? Well, I hope so. I wouldn't want my grandchildren running around saying my mommy is a baseball coach. <laughs> Number two, bacon and eggs. There you are, madame. Bacon crisp, eggs over easy. Would you check the number on my door? I get a feeling I'm in the presidential suite. <laughs> no, but you are the first lady. Oh, thanks, honey. I take it you're pleased with my deal. Pleased? Mom, I'm thrilled. Why, this means I can live. Live? Well, I was under the impression that was what you were doing the past 20 years. <laughs> I mean, live with a capital L. I want to be a poet. I want to go to Greenwich Village and write and live and mingle. I want to... Just a minute. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Now, uh, write, okay. Live, okay. Mingle, we're going to have to talk about it. I had a hunch you'd feel that way. <laughs> well, maybe it's just as well. It is? Uh-huh. If I go to Greenwich Village and become a poet, and Tommy Johnson stays here and goes into his father's feed and grain business, we may gradually drift apart. It could put a strain on togetherness all right. <laughs> so why don't you play it by ear and see what happens? I guess you're right. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. What are you doing, Mom? Taking inventory? No. 
I'm making up a shopping list. Life goes on, you know, and we'll be here a while yet. I know. That'll give me time to decide. Decide what? Well, you know what my dream has always been. Mm. Hollywood. Right. Well, I was thinking, what if I went all the way out there and got discovered? Then I guess you'd be a movie star. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, what's wrong with being a movie star? Seems like a nice line of work. Sure. Ooh, such enthusiasm. Well, gosh, what's the fun of being a movie star if you don't have a home to come back to so you can break a little? I guess you've got a problem, all right. Hey, Casey Cannonball waiting down at the stop. Oh, that's funny. I didn't hear the whistle. Well, cheer up, dear. Maybe you'll have a streak of luck and not be discovered. <laughs> Floyd. Here she comes. Hi, boys. I didn't hear the whistle. We didn't blow it. And we may never blow it again. Not for the shady rest, anyhow. But why? After you go, things won't be the same. Not the same at all. There's the reason we didn't blow the whistle. <laughs> oh? Charlie's right, Kate. I got the feeling so bad. I, I, I got the crying. And I got the wood all wet that wouldn't burn. That meant we couldn't get no steam up. And when he finally pulled the cart, all the whistle would do was go... Pitiful. Now, boys, let's, let's pull ourselves together. After all, this isn't my last trip, you know. No, but it soon will be. All right, Floyd, you holler board and we'll be on our way. You're taking your whittling outside. You're getting shavings all over the floor. You're right, Sam. Worst winter we've had since 1906. <laughs> no, no, Grandpa. I'm talking about shavings on the floor. Well, that's up to you. If you want to shave on the floor, go ahead. I prefer standing in front of the mirror. Grandpa, I... You know, Sam... You may be great shakes as a grocer, but I won't give you anything for sweeping. Look at all them shakes you left on the floor. From your store. Oh, hi, Sarah. Yeah, I heard about Kate Bradley going to sell a shady rest. Yeah, well, I'll feel as bad about Kate leaving as you do. Oh, Sarah, Kate's just coming in the store now. Hello, Grandpa. Shh. Sore heads on the phone talking to Kate. I'll do that, Sarah. Kate, Sarah says she's very sorry to hear about your leaving. You know, if you don't mind, I'll finish my whittling outside. Well, Grandpa, I don't leave on my account. At least. Why, them snowdrifts will be five feet high. Worst winter we've had since 1906. <laughs> so, you heard the exciting news? Yeah, I've heard the news, but I don't think it's too exciting. Well, Sam, do you realize what selling the Shady Rest will mean? Yeah. I realize what it'll mean to us. Us? You and me. With you moving away, things won't be the same between us. Well, if it'll make you feel any better, and I do move to the big city, I'll write you a letter every month and send you a grocery order. Kate, now you're making fun. Oh, if, if I am, I didn't mean to. Well, Kate, you know that down through the years, We've always had sort of a quiet understanding. Sammy, you seem... Well, I'm not used to talking about half a dozen lemons or ten pounds of sugar or a carton of cottage cheese. I'm talking about, well, a romance. There, I said it. Sam? As I say, Keith, it's, it's, it's been sort of a quiet understanding. It's practically been deaf and dumb. Well, I'm not the pushy type. That you aren't, Sam. I know you can tell my feelings. How could I? Okay, don't tell me you never noticed that whenever you order pork chops, I always trim the fat before I weigh them. And while the scale's registering, I always hold both thumbs in plain view. Oh, it, it's been an honest romance, all right. Now you're making fun again. No, I'm not, Sam. I've always felt very close to you. Oh, oh there you are. Oh, what time and she's got? Like a porcupine at a nudist convention. Kate, what 
is this I hear about you selling the shady rest and leaving the valley? Oh, it's true, Selma. But you can't leave. You just can't. You don't want me to leave? Oh, I wouldn't say that. Yes, I didn't think so. Oh, and that didn't come out right, Kate. I, I just don't want to see you leave. Why, Selma. Oh, we've had the most beautiful rivalry. You're the only worthy opponent I have in the valley. It just won't be the same railroading through legislation in the every other Wednesday afternoon discussion club. Without your familiar, I object. <laughs> You're the one who says I object. Oh. Well, without you, I won't have anything to object to. <laughs> oh, if you leave, who am I going to... to... Despise? There, see how I need you. You always come up with the right words. <laughs> it's been a beautiful relationship, all right. <laughs> Uncle Joe? There's only one thing it can be. Papers for the sale of the Shady Rest. Well, I'll say one thing. I'm sure going to miss you all. Miss us? What are you talking about? Steve, what are you saying? Well, look, I didn't mean to drop a bomb. It's just that, well, I like it here. And what's more, I have a business here. So I'll be staying. You mean even after we go away? Well, like I say, I have a business to consider. And I doubt if there's much call for crop dusting in Greenwich Village or at Hollywood and Vine. <laughs> well, then... Then may they all stay. Well, I'll get along. I can manage the Hooterville Hawks and be your mechanic on the side. You mean you stay here after we have to go away? Nothing doing. Why? What's wrong? Well, can't you see, shortstop, how unfair that is? I mean, while they're out struggling to be poets and movie stars, you'd get to stay here and be a grease monkey. <laughs> I'm not so sure I want to be a poet. Well, I'm not so sure I want to be a movie star. Well, not right this minute, anyway. Hold it. Steve, you may not be able to see how this whole thing will zoom our dynasty right to the top. How? Well, out here we're lost. In the city, we'll set up headquarters where everybody will know us. In the middle of the financial center. Right on the corner of Dunn and Bradstreet. <laughs> Sorry, Joe. No go? No go. Let me guess, we just inherited a million dollars. No. Uncle Joe was named Secretary of State. Oh, I wasn't even running. Really? Well, it's going to be hard to guess what put those big smiles on your bright and shining faces. What did it? Oh, thank you. Well? Well, this is it. Mr. Holloway will be here in the morning with the final papers. Isn't that nice? No, it isn't nice. You know, for an idea that started out to be nothing short of terrific, this has turned out to be the flop of the season. <laughs> isn't there some way you can get out of it? Sure. She hasn't signed the papers yet. Mr. Holloway and I shook hands. Shaking ain't signing. Oh, Uncle Joe. Come on, let's look on the bright side of it. We've talked about it. As a matter of fact, you know what this calls for? A celebration. And that's what we're going to have. We're going to celebrate leaving? We're going to celebrate a step forward. We're going to ask all of our friends. Uncle Joe, you get the volunteer band together. And the girls and I will start to get busy on the refreshments. And then we'll... And we'll... We'll have a real good time. <laughs> Some refreshments. Here you are, Selma. Thank you, Kay. Why, Selma, you actually sound sad. Well, after all, you are leaving, and you are one of my oldest, very oldest friends. <laughs> Play a number, it might liven up the party, huh? Sure, Kate. Can you fellas play uh, tiptoe through the tulips? 
Sure, but it'll come out hot time in the old town tonight. How come? Because that's the only song we know. <laughs> that song we played the other night at rehearsal wasn't hot time in the old town tonight. It was supposed to be. <laughs> no wonder I got through leading before you got through playing. <laughs> All right, let's try it. Well, Sam, will you wake up, Grandpa? Hey, Grandpa! I thought you caught me napping, didn't you? <laughs> Grandpa, we haven't started to play yet. Oh, I don't mind if I do. My feet are killing me. <laughs> All right, let's take it. Hold it, Joe, hold it. What now? He's not ready to play. I'll have to sit this one out, fellas. How come? Just thinking of Kate and the girls moving away made me feel so sad, I lost my pucker. I feel as bad about it as you do, Floyd. But we got a party going, so let's play. A one, a two. Now! Of course I know how. Every time there's a pause, you do that. You got it? All right, let's take it. Mr. Holloway. This is Bradley. I didn't intend to drop in on you at this hour, but I ran into this young man in Pixley who was kind enough to fly me down here. I figured why stay at the Pixley house when you'd enjoy Shady Rest hospitality. He's one of our biggest boosters. Uh, let's uh, go into the dining room where we can... Talk quietly. Fine, I have all the papers in order to sign. Hey, Joe, who's that fella? That's got to be Mr. Holloway, the man that Kate's selling the shady rest to. Joe, don't say that. You made me lose my pucker again. <laughs> Everything's written up as we discussed it, but uh, you take your time if you'd care to look it over. If you don't mind. Did Kate sign yet, Joe? Not yet. They're still looking over the papers. Boy, I wish there's something I could do. Say, any of you fellas know how to play Old Lang Syne? Hey, now I remember. That's the song we was trying to rehearse the other night. <laughs> Let's play it. Play it real sad. That's the only way we can play it. <laughs> All right. One, a two, a... just as you said. chain of hotels, I started out with a little country place myself. I think I realize what you're up against. You know something, Mrs. Bradley? I envy you. Thank you. Oh, I'm not going to sell it. Mrs. Bradley's not selling the hotel. Oh, oh. Mr. Carson, Kate isn't selling after all. Oh. You hear that, fellas? Kate ain't selling out. Song. 
Nick at Night's TV Land has uncovered three rare television oddities from our huge archives. Annie Potts in Good Time Girls, George Wendt in Making the Grade, and Rock Hudson in The Devlin Connection. They're big stars on the little screen on Saturday Cavalcade, starting at 12 noon Eastern, 9 Pacific. Now stay tuned for Green Acres, next on Nick at Night's TV Land. Junction.